I got dolls from the Dollar Tree in 4x6 frames. I started off by removing the picture and the glass. The back of the frame is black, so I spray painted it silver. I also spray painted the wooden dolls. Using a foam board, I drew out the measurements of the picture frames into three of the boards that I cut out. So this is the inner measurements of the picture frame and the thickness is 0.8 inches. Like I said, I made three of them and then I kept them aside. I got six packs of the silver beads from Walmart, but then it's also sold at the Dollar Tree. I used the doll for measurements to cut out all of the beads that I'll be using for the project. I spray painted the board silver and then I also made holes around the board using a skewer. I will be using monofilament lines to connect the beads to the board. To make it easy for me, I made a whole lot and I also cut out a lot of tape. I started inserting the beads and then holding it down with tape. Like I said earlier, it's way better to have a lot of the beads prepped up with a lot of tape cut out. That way, when you start putting in the beads, you just keep going on and on and on until you get to the end. I'm going to be trimming off the excess string after I've made sure that all of my beads are in place. This is what it looks like and then I kept it down, creating enough space for it at the bottom and then using an E6000 glue into each and every one of the holes. This is to cover the holes and to also give the picture frame a strong hold. Before I put the picture frame on top of it, I'm going to be putting a little bit of hot glue just to keep the frame in place. Hold the board together with the frame for the glue to dry out and do not press the frames on top of the beads and leave it to dry for some hours or else the beads could slide out and we don't want that. So this is what the sides look like. And then I turned it to the back and carefully opened up the beads. And this is where I'm going to be putting in the wooden dowels that I spray painted silver. I'm going to be gluing them down on all the four corners using a hot glue gun first before I go around with an E6000 glue. And then I placed another picture frame on top of it and I used an E6000 glue to hold it down. Now I turned it over and then I had to support it just so it doesn't move around and left it overnight to dry. The foam board that I used is showing by the side so I'm gonna be covering it up with bling wrap. I made three of the boxes and I'm going to be using two packs of napkin rings using four on top of the picture frame using an E6000 glue and then stacking them up till I got to the last box. This is a terrarium planter that I got from the Dollar Tree and I removed the top because I won't be needing it. And then I used push lights that I already have at home. The light inside reflects on the terrarium, that's why I'm using it. So all I'm doing is just putting it inside of the box and that's it. My reasons for using a terrarium to reflect the lighting, as you can see, it's bouncing off to the terrarium, causing a reflection, making it look like I've got double lighting inside and that makes it even more brighter. This lighting can be placed almost anywhere and still be attractive. I wanted to use garland beads because it's going to be more pretty, but then someone asked if they could use regular beads from the Dollar Tree instead of garland beads, and then I had to use the Dollar Tree beads and it still came out pretty. I'm going to be using this hard plastic cup that I have at home, and I made a hole in the middle using a soldering iron. 
And now I took a bling wrap and then I cut a singular strip and use a thumbtack into the first hole that's there and glued it on and then I passed it through the hole that we have in the cup. I glued on the opening just to make sure that it stays in place. This is a string lighting that uses a remote that I'm going to be using. And then I wrapped the string lighting around the cup and glued it on. Like I said, it uses a remote and I will be leaving a link for this lighting in the description box below. I glued on the cup to the top of the battery pack to make it easy to change batteries and kept it aside. These are ornament balls that I got from the Dollar Tree, the large and the small sizes. And I'm going to be gluing them at random to the cup. And this is what it looks like. You can use a cup hook to mount it on the ceiling and you just pass through the diamond wrap inside and hold it together with flexible wires. I got these wires from an item that I bought so I just used it to hold it together. So I mounted it up and so this is the final look and I really love the way it turned out. This is an old board that I had laying around at home and then I already painted it black. I took a foam board and then I cut circles out of it with 12.5 inches each and I divided the circles into two and I made a lot of them and I took one white and split it into two and I took two black halves and split them into two. I spray painted some silver and then I took the board and I spray painted just the middle part silver and then I drew out a circle that was 14 inches. That's going to be for the mirror that I'll be putting in the middle. And now I glued on the four quadrants at the four corners. And the top is going to be left open. It's going to be at a certain angle to create an opening in the inside. I got LED lightings and I opened them up. And I'm going to be inserting them into the first layer that we have here. And then the second layer will be at the bottom. So I can have lights coming in from two layers. Then the ones at the bottom, I'm going to be using glue on some of the lighting just to make sure that they stay in place. And I mounted the headboard with nails. This is a mirror that I got from Walmart that I intend to use for the side. So I got two of them and I mounted them side by side close to the board in the middle. I really love this headboard because it does have a futuristic look. I got this door hanger from the Dollar Tree. I then drew out three circles from a foam board. I'm going to carve out a hole in the middle using an X-Acto knife. I was careful to make sure that the hole does not go through the top. This is how I plan on using it. And I did that for two of the circles. And for the third circle, I just used a pair of scissors and then I cut it to the middle. This is a large ornament ball that I got from the Dollar Tree and I'm going to be cutting it with an X-Acto knife to the measurement that I'll be needing for the project. This is so that my candle will have a steady base. I got this candle online, but this is the type of the cell at the Dollar Tree and it has its own base. This is the base that I want to use for mine. And then I chose this candle because it has a wax dripping effect. But if you like, you can also use the one sold at the Dollar Tree. I'm using this bowl from the Dollar Tree because of the height of the hook that's on the hanger. And I'm going to pass it through the bowl. I made a mark and then I'm going to use a soldering iron to open up the hole. I'm going to glue them together and this is what's going to keep it in place. Now to keep it balanced, I used a second bowl on the other end and I'm going to glue them together and I'm also going to cut out a round circle for the second bowl. I cut another circle that I'm going to glue in the middle. I used a strong adhesive here just to make sure that it comes out strong and sturdy. I carved out a little hole in the middle to make sure that the iron is right inside and not just on the surface. Mm -hmm. 
I cut two of the ornament balls and then two of the circles with a groove in the middle. I turned them over and I'm gonna be gluing the cut out ornament balls on top of the circles. The third circle that I cut all the way to the middle, I will make a hole at the midpoint where it's gonna sit properly on the iron. I cut a third ornament ball to this size so that it will fit with the space available. I'm going to be using a strong adhesive all around and I'm going to make sure that the part where you have the board touching the bowl and then where the board is in contact with the iron is going to be covered generously with A6000 glue. I also use the glue to cover up the line. Now for these other parts that I will be using, I'm going to use a little bit of hot glue just to keep it in place before I go around with a strong adhesive. This is what the bottom part looks like. Now I'm going to be sealing it off with an E6000 glue. Now that I'm done applying glue here, I'm going to go ahead and apply a generous amount of glue to the base. When I was done with this, I left it overnight to dry. And I also forgot to mention that I glued the part where the hook went in through the bowl. This is what it looks like and I'm going to be using a silver or stellium spray paint and primer. And this is what it looks like. Now I'm going to be covering up the rough edges with self-adhesive gems that I got from Walmart. I'm going to be applying these gems using a hot glue gun just to make sure that they stay in place. I used the gems on just the circles that will be holding the candles. And then I used bling wrap for the other circles. I used more gems to cover up this part where the iron shows and at the bottom part too. I'm going to be covering this part with bling wrap. This is what it looks like. And then I glued one at the top part here. To mount it on a wall, you can use either command strips or a hook. I use command strips because I was going to change it up and use a mirror to see what it looks like. So this is what it looks like when it's mounted on the wall and I love the way it looks. I was curious to know what it was going to look like behind a mirror so I took it off from the wall and glued it onto mirrors. And I mounted it using command strips behind the mirror. I really love how this sconce candlelight bras turned out. Now let me know in the comment section below if you prefer the sconces on the mirror or on the bare wall. Thank you so much for watching. I have other videos linked in the description box below. Do check them out and don't forget to click on the subscribe button.